In the last hour, uh, speaking of Russia itself, President Putin's spokesperson uh, has been speaking, blaming the United States for the alleged drone attack on the Kremlin, saying that the decision was executed by Kyiv but taken in Washington. Now, the allegation is that the attack happened on Wednesday. It was a drone. It was shot down as it flew over the Kremlin. Ukraine has denied any involvement. President Putin's spokesperson said, and I quote, we are well aware that the decision on such actions and terrorist attacks is not made in Kyiv, but in Washington. Well, following the incident, Ukraine was then hit by a barrage of missiles overnight uh, into Thursday morning. Some of the pictures here on the screen of the skies above Kyiv, Zaporizhia and Odessa also in the south were targeted by Russia. So let us speak to our BBC Russia uh, correspondent uh, Sergei Goryashka, who is joining us uh, from Riga. And uh, Sergei, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about what the Kremlin has been saying within the last hour. Well, the Kremlin all, again claims that Ukraine, the Kyiv regime, as they say, is responsible for the attack. But they, according to the Kremlin, conducted this uh, drone attack with the authorization of uh, Washington, D.C., so of the United States. And uh, uh, I mean, they are bringing the United States to like to share the responsibility for this uh, public humiliation they suffered earlier with the United States, as it uh, could be too humiliating for Kremlin to uh, recognize that just Ukrainians did this and probably even not uh, Ukrainians from the army, but just some enthusiasts who managed to uh, fly through the Russian counter-missile system inside uh, Moscow and uh, even inside Kremlin to hit uh, the palace, the Putin's residence. Uh, the oh, Kremlin, uh, well, as we speak, the spokesperson Dmitry Peskov did not uh, tell what the response would and could be. He just said that uh, it will happen in time and that would be like a symmetrical response. And uh, they also uh, promised that the Victory Day parade, which is scheduled on the 9th of May, will take place. Um, Mr. Zelensky also calling for a fully fledged tribunal to hold Russia to account for what it describes as a war of aggression. I wonder if you could just remind us, where does Russia stand in terms of the ICC? Russia does not recognize the authority of the ICC and uh, now Russia is trying to mock uh, the court's decisions and uh, Zelensky's appearances. I'm pretty sure that they would be uh, mocked on today's Russian uh, political TV shows as well. Uh, still, uh, Russia has imposed laws uh, which uh, allow to imprison people even if they ask uh, for the decision of the ICC or, the other, or other authorities, international authorities, uh, which Russia does not uh, take part in anymore, uh, if they ask to implement them. So basically, if you're out on the streets of Moscow or just uh, posting something online about that you support the ICC's decision, you could face criminal charges. And this is a very clear sign that Russian authorities are worried about this fact and uh, they do not want people to realize that uh, their president is now uh, basically uh, under an arrest warrant and uh, he's uh, considered as an as a criminal who needs to be brought to to justice okay um sergey Boryashka, thank you very much uh, for that speaking to us from riga earlier i spoke to michael Bosakyu, who is from the Atlantic Council, and uh, he gave me some reaction to what President Zelensky had to say. Well, the creation of an international tribunal is a very important step in bringing uh, Russia to justice for its many war crimes. This is something that uh, many Ukrainians have been asking for. Uh, look, I think the feeling here is that the wheels of justice have been turning very slowly. Already we're into year two of Russia's full-scale invasion. It's been a long time in the Ukrainian kind of mind, in the Ukrainian heart, uh, which is really bleeding right now, uh, when those, for example, war crimes in, in Bucha and Irpin have been committed. So on the 
plus side for the Ukrainians, uh, they have a lot of expertise here built up in terms of investigating war crimes, in terms of uh, collecting irrefutable evidence. So that should speed um, the, the process. But uh, on a final note on this, we all know by now that Russia does not subscribe to the rules-based international order. Uh, they, for example, do not um, subscribe to the uh, decisions out of the Hague uh, in, in terms of the uh, downing of MH17. They won't hand over uh, suspects. So that's going to be very difficult for justice to be achieved in, in that regard. The comments that have been coming from the Kremlin in the last uh, few minutes um, alleging that the United States, that Washington were involved in that um, so-called attack on the Kremlin by Ukraine, that, that drone attack, what did you make of the timing? Uh, predictable and uh, complete nonsense. It's, it's entirely out of the uh, predictable uh, Kremlin playbook. I um, very much uh, believe that this was a Russian false flag operation that serves two purposes. One is to stoke uh, the domestic audience to uh, further create uh, more fertile conditions, perhaps for more uh, wide mobilization and for an escalation of the war. But secondly, to really, uh, this almost sends a chill down my back, quite frankly, to create the good conditions for Russia to make a direct strike on an important uh, government installation in Kiev perhaps even the office of the president. Um, so th it, it doesn't appear that this is something Ukraine had the capability of pulling off or even wanted to pull off because